About a year ago, I purchased this awesome sword from Fabry. There's a link just up here. And this is an awesome sword. This really, really is. But I've always wanted to make myself a sword scabbard to go with it. Well, here it is, and I'm really happy with it. Let's take a look and see how it was done. Alrighty guys, so looking to make a scabbard. Um, so I purchased this Fabry sword uh, last year, 2019, and I wanted to get a, a decent scabbard for it. The scabbard that I purchased with the sword from Fabry is, is alright, but it doesn't really suit my needs. So what I want to do is I want to uh, build my own scabbard and I decided to use one of the wooden core type ideas. So these are historic. Now there's a couple of things that I'm gonna point out straight away. Number one is um, some of them were lined historically with linen, some of them with fur. When you're using uh, wool to line your scabbard with, if the fibers point down, it becomes harder to draw your sword out. If the fibers point up, then it becomes harder to put your sword away. The second thing that I'm going to say is, and obviously some scabbards were actually unlined as well. We have found uh, examples of those. So uh, the next thing to say is wood type, radio. Now there's a several different types of wood that you can use for this quite successfully and quite historically accurate so you could use poplar or beech um, both are absolutely fine uh, poplar is very light but it does break and when i say it breaks it more cracks than breaks as such however um and it is very historically accurate I'm not able really to get hold of very much of either of those, I guess due to the lockdown. So what I'm gonna use is some fairly thin pine. So there's two ways you can essentially make a scabbard using a wooden core. So option one is you uh, take two pieces of fairly thin wood and you gouge out or you carve out or you extrude from that sufficient room to place the blade and you also want um, enough room in there for the for the lining I've done this a bit unsuccessfully recently I think this is about my third attempt so I'm a little frustrated with this process however we're giving it another go uh, and I'm also wanting to make one of these for my son at the moment as well I'm using pine uh, now the other thing that I'm going to add is you actually probably want more room on in the scabbard than most historical reenactors probably would use um, and we'll address that a bit later once we've got the scabbard in our hand because I say that because the wood will swell as it gets damp because wood is essentially what they call hydroscopic so it absorbs moisture as it absorbs moisture it will swell uh, Alrighty, so let's get on with this. Now what I'm going to do is the second of those methods that we just spoke about and that is to take instead of two pieces of wood you take three. So uh, you take one piece of wood and you essentially cut out the room for the blade and then you place uh, a piece of wood either side of that. Um, because these are very very thin pieces of wood that's pretty much what I'm going to end up doing anyway. Uh, so so that's what I'm going to go with. The way to do this is you want the sword placed pretty much dead center in the piece of wood. You need a roughly, at least minimum, 
one centimeter width around the blade for the scabbard. Now I'm just going to measure that to make sure we're dead center. Yep, there we go. All right. And then what I'm going to do is just trace around. Uh, now what I'm going to do is just trace around the blade. So this is what I'm going to cut out. Whilst I'm cutting that, what I, I'm just using a very basic contact cement for this part of the build. You do need a, a half decent kind of liberal application here. So all this really does is it just holds in place the blade whilst it's going in and out of the scabbard. It doesn't really do a lot more. It helps, does, it does help protect the sword from the scabbard and the scabbard from the sword to an extent as well. So you do want to be a bit kind with it. Rightio, the felt is now on. Uh, so as I say, this is just a very basic felt. There's nothing crazy. Uh, just, I think it's, um, but it is 100% wool. Um, so that's fine. And now we'll go ahead and cut out the uh, rest of the scabbard. Any kind of woodworking project like this, you really do need the correct PPE on that is personal protective equipment. That is glasses, a mask, and ear defenders. Alrighty, so let's just get this cut down. You can see there that the, the sword has a nice fit to it. Righto, next thing we're going to do is just glue these pieces together. I'm using just a very simple white glue. Uh, don't use too much because um, as you put the pieces together, what can happen is the glue will get into the gap where the sword goes and your sword will no longer fit and the money you just spent on wood and wool has just gone to waste. Alright, so that fits onto there, this one now fits onto here, everything should line up pretty sweet. Now again, the trick is don't apply too much pressure. Now I managed to get hold of these C clamps actually quite cheaply from my hardware store called Bunnings. I'm in Queensland, Australia. Uh, they only cost a couple of bucks each, a couple of dollars each, so nice little bit of kit to have. Well, this has now come out amazingly well and I'm really happy with it. Now what I'm going to do is trim down the scabbard and start to shape it. We'll see how that starts to take shape. Let's so now we've got the rough shape, what we're going to do is just sand it down. I know it looks a little bit uh, crazy at the moment but there we go we'll we'll work it out
the next thing to do, and a lot of people forget to do this, is to varnish it. I need to put it on an oil-based varnish, and what that's going to do is, uh, because wood is what they call hydroscopic, that is, wood absorbs moisture, what I then need is um, to put the varnish down to stop the wood absorbing moisture out of the leather. So let's, uh, let's have a crack at that. It really doesn't matter what kind of finish you use on, on the varnish, no one's going to see it. It really, really, really doesn't matter. This is simply about protecting, protecting the leather basically. If the wood absorbs the moisture, what happens is the leather will crack and the scabbard won't last. So you really got to build it, build your scabbard properly right from the get-go. Right, so I'm just going to use a very basic kind of adhesive. This is called Tarzan's Grip. It's just a simple contact cement. You only need to really hold these in place. Um, there's really no need to go crazy. All you're really doing, as I say, Because uh, once you have applied these, then we're going to go and stitch the leather on top. Right, there we go. That's some rubbish. Just some quick measurements down from the t on these. Now uh, I've measured down five centimeters, which is the same as two inches. 2.75 inches, which is roughly speaking the same as 7 centimetres. 6 inches, which is the same as 15 centimetres. And 8 inches, which is just over 20 centimetres. What this, what this is for is setting up your strap configuration. And that does change throughout the early medieval period quite remarkably. You went from a kind of, in a fairly quick period of time, it was a very serious transition from like the early medieval baldric type version changing across to uh, suspending swords from um, sword belts. Alrighty guys, now mine is for kind of 11th century reenactment so this is the way that I've chosen to go. I realize lots of other people out there choose different things, that's fine. Okay, let's, um, let's see how that goes. We'll come back in a few hours or so once that's dried. Alrighty guys, so at this stage what I do is just use a piece of paper and figure out exactly how much leather I'm going to need. The two edges of the leather are going to butt together like that. There's no overlap, there's no seams or anything like that. So this needs to be pretty close together. Now you are going to find sometimes it doesn't quite work the way that you want it to. Leather has a habit of stretching or shrinking or doing all kinds of things that you may not necessarily want it to do. So, um, use a piece of paper, get a pretty good idea, and then transfer that to leather, which we've now done here. I just use a ballpoint pen on the reverse side of the leather, that's fine. Nothing's gonna go wrong with that. Make sure you know exactly what you're cutting. This is um, two millimeter leather, which is around about uh, four or five ounce leather for my American and Canadian friends. Now when it comes to cutting leather, uh, make sure you have a good quality straight edge and a nice quality knife with a good sharp blade. For those of you who are new to leather work, it's, it can be pretty intimidating making cuts in leather. Leather's obviously a very expensive item. Um, so I suggest if you're one of those people and we've all started there, then some paper and make sure you cut a really good quality pattern. Alrighty, now that's our piece of leather. Essentially what's going to happen is we just roll this over and the two sides meet up pretty well. Okay, you want to make sure you've left enough room that because the leather will as I say, shrink. Right, yeah. the next thing we're going to do is we are going to 
uh, use what's called a stitch groover. So a stitch groover simply creates a very small gouge in the in the leather work and it means that I can have a consistent width from the edge of the leather when I'm doing my uh, stitching to keep everything nice and neat. It also means the stitches go underneath the um, surface of the leather and that way um, they're more robust. Alrighty, stitch grooving is done. Now what I'm going to do is use a hole punch. Now you don't have to stitch groove and you don't need to use a hole punch. What you might do is use um, a, a sewing awl or something like that which will pierce the leather. My issue with that is that um, leather is phenomenally expensive at the moment and I don't necessarily think that that's going to create the best outcome for me anyway. So what I'm looking for is what works for me. Now what works for you may be entirely different and that's okay. Right, yeah, all the hole punching is now done. Now the next thing to do is going to be to soak this in water. So I'm going to soak the piece of leather in water for about five minutes so that it gets nice and wet and moist and is pliable, easy to work with. Alrighty, you're just soaking this up in the bathtub. That's getting nice and wet, nice and heavy. Just leave that for a little bit longer. Alrighty, so now we've got our piece of leather. I want to place the, the back of the scabbard upwards. Now just to be conscious, we've got our wet leather down and we've got our scabbard down with the back side pointing up. So everything's correct. Now what we're going to do is start stitching. Now I'm stitching with two needles this time. You don't need a massive amount of thread is just gradually work your way down in a cross pattern. Now it does depend on you, this is really important um, because scabbards changed quite significantly over the period of, um, of the medieval period. So you may find that a scabbard designed for the early medieval period is radically different to something that you would find later on in the period. Different technologies, different materials, different all sorts of things. Um, you don't you don't want to rush this because it's only going to end in disaster if you do, but at the same time you don't want to be just dragging your feet about it either. Uh, I find like today's a reasonably warm day here in Brisbane and it's actually getting the, the leather is drying a lot, drying out much quicker than I anticipated. You just need to be a bit methodical with your stitching and don't pull too hard on the individual stitches otherwise you'll rip the leather but you, um, you can pull on the, the cord. Now I use um, a, a waxed linen thread yeah, I use a waxed linen thread which is really good for this. Um, it's nice and easy to work with. Just very simple and straightforward. And then when it comes to the end I can just burn it. Um, Alright, so I just pull the two cords and pull them tight. And that keeps all of this nice and neat. 
If you're trying to push down on your risers, don't use your fingernails or a piece of metal or something because it'll damage the tooling. This is really quite wet leather. Um, and it won't, uh, it won't, and the advantage of it having been this wet is that Um, it's really easy to dye the leather because the leather the dye will just absorb really really easily Which is exa exactly what I'm looking for and that's the kind of result we're looking for All right, So once you finish stitching all I do because I've got a wax thin thread just cut off the ends Just be a little bit careful what you're doing and singe those down There you go done and we've now got something starting to look a lot like a sword scabbard. The next thing we're going to do is dye this. The reason that I'm wetting that down is because it's going to help me get a nice even coat when I go to apply a, um, a dye to the leather. Historically they don't seem to have dyed leather, at least not at this point in time in history, but it does give you a really nice finish. Um, now I tend to find it's best to wear gloves for this. And the dye that I'm using is a Leathercraft dye by Maclace Leather. You may find you need to put on several coats and that's fine. It just depends on uh, you and your project. Pretty happy with that. So I fitted a shape to the end of it, which is a, it's actually a Scandinavian, or well, this particular shape is based on a Scandinavian find, but perfectly suitable for this particular sort of age when uh, modern day England would have been a very much an Anglo-Scandinavian, Anglo-Norse type environment. Very much sort of multicultural at the time. I'm currently just working on the second strap of my of the, the sword belt, so to speak. I find beveling is a really good way just to give your, your project a nice smooth edge, just gives it that extra bit of a nice professional finish. Rightio, now what we're going to do is put the belt on, so this is starting to get to the, uh, to the interesting end. Alright, so you just need to mark up. Now I'm going to go through this a bit slowly so I understand some of you might not be as worried about this, that's okay. Right, yeah, there's a guy called Peter Johnson, which I'm going to link in the description below. He's done some really good drawings on how to get this correct. And it does take a little while and it does seem a little weird. But once you get it, you get it and that's fine. Right, so we've threaded the top strap through here. Now what happens is the this strap goes round goes between, comes out, it goes and then so from this point it now just wraps around behind and you come back over this one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut a couple of holes in the scabbard itself to thread through. So we've just cut a hole in the scabbard leather here and we're going to go through in this section here and we'll need to touch up the die, that's fair enough. So this comes around and now goes through. And you want a really nice solid fit like that. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is sew on to the second belt, okay? Now I just use a very simple running stitch when I'm doing this kind of thing. Um, I'm using a wax linen thread. 
Oops. And all I'm going to do is go one way and then go back the other way. And you basically end up with a subtle stitch. A uh, really, really, really strong stitch. I really love it. Super simple. I like it. And then just singe the ends off. This is just a wax linen thread, so too easy. Right, so this now comes round behind. And we want to finish them over here. But anyway, now, now just to finish this off, what we're going to do is we're going to do a crown knot. So that means we're going to loop this one round twice. Now this one then comes around. And you just got to pull everything tight. And you end up with something looking a lot like, oops. This, now my strap's probably a little bit wide at the bottom there. And I'm just going to go and touch up the, um, the dies and then that's all finished. Righto guys, there we go, all finished, all done. I'm really, really, really happy with this. It's come out really well. Well there we go guys. The sword scabbard's all finished, all done and I'm really super happy with it. Lots of adjustability, obviously. I might cut this belt down just a little bit in the future, but you need to have plenty of room depending on what winter kit you're wearing, depending on what type of armor you're wearing, but you don't want it getting in the way. Rightio, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.